Hey everybody, it's Professor Fiore, and in this video we are going to look at Lissajou patterns. What the heck are Lissajou patterns? The hardest thing about Lissajou patterns is remembering how to pronounce it, okay? Um, basically what this is, is an XY plot of two sine waves. So if you haven't looked at the video on how to use the post processor in Tina TI, make sure you do that first, because that's what we're going to use XY mode in the post processor. All right, what I've got here is about as simple as it gets. I just have two voltage sources. And right now they're set to the same value, sine wave with a one volt peak at one kilohertz. Now I am just going to do a transient analysis on this, just so you can verify what's going on. So there's uh, 10 milliseconds. I'm just going to get 10 cycles. And these two things are identical. So they're laying right on top of each other. It looks like there's only one. But if I put the legend in here, you can see, yeah, there's two of them, right? VG2 just happens to be laying right on top of VG1. They're identical. So boop, you don't really see anything. All right. Now, what if instead of plotting the voltage versus time, I was to plot one of the voltages versus the other voltage. So I'll pretend we have a little XY grid over here, right? So here's like zero, like it is now, but going this way, this is the other axis, all right? So on this axis, I'm gonna say it's generator one, and on this axis, it's generator two. So if I were to just look at generator one, what ends up happening is its amplitude goes out, to a positive peak, back to zero, out to a negative peak, back to zero, right? This is just gonna swing back and forth like this, right? That's just kind of drawn on its side, basically, and not stretched out in time. It just goes out to a peak, back to zero, out to the negative peak, back to zero, right? So that's what we're doing here. Just doing it sideways, right? Out to the peak, back to zero, out negative peak, back to zero. At the same time, the other one, VG2, the generator number two, I'm gonna plot on the vertical, so that's doing the same thing. It goes from zero, a positive peak, back to zero, to a negative peak, back to zero, and just keeps repeating itself. Now, when you plot the co that coordinate pair, right, since these are identical, right, you start at zero right here, and then at some instant in time later, a few microseconds later, you know, the generator one is out to here, but generator two is out to here, so you get a little line. And then as time goes on, right, VG1 extends, but so does VG2. So you get a straight line that kind of goes out like this. As a matter of fact, it would be at a 45 degree angle because these things have the same exact amplitude. It would hit the peak, retrace itself back to zero, and then it would do the negative peak, right? Go out to here and come back. So all you would see would be this perfect sort of flat line, right? At a 45 degree angle, going from the first quadrant back to the third quadrant. That's it. All right, what if we change the phase? Ah, that's where it gets interesting. Well, before we do that, let's just verify what this looks like. So I'm gonna go up into the uh, post-processor. So hit the more button. And we are gonna go into XY mode. All right, so make sure you click on that. So your line editor here gets split into two. You have one piece for the X part and one piece for the Y part. So I'm gonna put generator one on the X part. So copy that, select it and copy it down. And then over here in the Y part, I'm gonna stick at VG2, All right? So this is our little voltage XY, right? I'll just, how about if I just call that VXY, all right? Pretty inventive name. Okay, so we're gonna have a new tab open up with this plot. Boom, there's our straight line, all right? Pretty exciting, eh, not really. But there it is, you know, the, the X function, which by the way, you know, we can, we can change the names of these, right? The function X was, was a VN, okay, uh, excuse me, VG1, I was gonna call it VN1, and then, um, Oh, look at that. My sloppy. Well, that's a little better. And then over here, we can do the same thing. 
give that appropriate name that's vg2 right beautiful okay so as expected right no biggie now I come back and what I'm going to do is uh, change the phase on these so vg2 I'm going to keep the 1k and the and the uh, one volt peak but I'm going to change the phase to 180 degrees so what's that going to do well so when the vg1 is going positive vg2 is going negative so that should make a line that goes out like this and then when vg1 goes negative vg2 is going positive so guess what i'm going to get a diagonal line that goes like this all right all right let's run the analysis here all right i'm going to just jump back here real quick so you can see yeah okay they are perfectly out of phase all right and we can see them now we can see the two colors and there's the line so far so good right and you're thinking well this you know i know how to draw a straight line all right so here's where it starts to get interesting what if we have a phase that's neither of these right let's do something like 90 degrees what happens now okay this is a little bit more complicated because now you have a sine and a cosine basically so when the vg1 is going like this starting at zero and going out vg2 would already be up here and then going down so what you would get is an arc and then when this vg1 comes back to zero vg2 is going to be going down this way so you're going to get another arc and the same kind of thing is going to happen on the other side so we are going to get basically a circle it looks like an ellipse only because of the way I have shaped the window all right so if you make this so that the the grid is square right these grids are square so that this is weighted the same way it's a circle all right well it's getting kind of interesting I think because now we can ask another question well before I go any further right if it was 90 or minus 90 we'd be in the same sort of position we'd still get that circle kind of thing and in fact let me make this just a little bit bigger so it looks more like a circle now how's that yeah I guess that's pretty good all right so now let's go in and do some kind of our arbitrary phase shift down here so not 90 not 180 I don't know how about 45 hey I get an ellipse well that's pretty interesting come on seriously that's got to be a little bit interesting all right so you got the perfect circle you got the straight line and now we're getting some kind of cross between them because the phase is in between them right I got a phase between 0 and 180 so I'm getting this kind of you know interesting little ellipse well what if the phase shift is you know not 45 but it's like uh I don't know negative 45. I get a similar kind of thing okay mirror image and it's actually if you were going to draw it by hand these things would be um sort of tracing in a different pattern all right let's try something else all right how about let me go uh because 90 was our um 90 was our circle right so I want to go on the other side of the 90. so let's say we go to 135 right 45 degrees beyond 90. what do you think is going to happen there bonk going the other way let's try another one so we had 45 so what if we had something relatively small like I don't know 12 degrees think about it for a sec what do you think we're going to get yep 
a skinnier ellipse. Turns out there's a formula that you can use that this would indicate what the exact phase shift is. And I'll get to that in a sec. All right. But you can, you can determine what the phase shift in a system is. Now I'm just using, you know, two function generators here, but clearly this could be a, an RLC circuit and you're comparing, let's say, an input voltage to the voltage across some component or the voltage of one branch versus another or the current of one branch versus the voltage of that branch. Okay, so you're going to get something like this. It might be an ellipse that goes in this direction, might be much more openness, it might be much more, you know, uh, tight, in other words, closer to a line than this one is. But basically what I care about is a measurement of what we call outer versus inner. So the outer is this extreme from here to here, which you can actually do from zero up, which is how I'm going to do it with a, a probe and a cursor in just a sec. And then the inner, which is this span from here to here along zero, right? Um, and again, I'm just going to go from zero up to here. It, it's called inner and outer because years ago when we had analog scopes, this is how you would measure it. You would put it on the scope face like this and you would measure the inner uh, distance and then you would measure the outer distance. And we would use those two numbers. All right. Okay. So just to kind of show what's happening here. Let's shift over to an RC network. This is going to have a phase shift. This happens to be the formula, the arc sine of inner over outer. Right now, I've already discussed this. Solid line rising left to right is zero degrees. Solid line falling left to right, like this, is 180. Perfect circle. You got plus and minus, plus or minus 90 degrees. Right. So you get something like this in between. Let's run on this circuit. A transient analysis. All right, so I can see, look, here's VC. All right. I got my generator. That's the green. Here's VC, the voltage cross cap. I know that the capacitor, in a case like this, is going to create a lag network with this resistor, and we're going to see that capacitor voltage lagging, delaying in time. Now, I can find what the phase shift is by using some cursors, Right, and figure out what this time is, figure out what that time delay is. And knowing what the period is, I can take that ratio, multiply it by 360, bingo, I got my phase shift. That's one way of doing it. And it's a great way to do it. Right? It's a very accurate way to do it. But you can also do this utilizing the Lissage uh, characteristic. All right, so I'm gonna come in here and um, what do you think I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do an XY, right? And um, I might say, okay, I can do this either way, but I'm going to just grab Vgen and put it down in here. And then for the Y, I'm going to grab Vc. All right, and we're just going to call that, uh, I'll just call that Vcp for, for Vc's phase. Create it. Boom, there we go. So what I would do is I would measure, I can get my little probe over here, all right? Put this over here and I can measure what's going on. So I would grab this as my uh, inner measurement. All right, so that's the 400 and almost 449 mils. And then my outer measurement, I would come up here. All right, let's just see what I'm doing here. Because here I'm on the zero, all right? I'm down here on the zero axis, okay? So, I know this is a little freaky because this is going to kind of go, it's going to trace the ellipse. You're used to the cursor sort of following, you know, this, uh, this time-based function. So it's a little bit different. But in any case, um, and then I'm going to get the outer value up here, which is like 840-something, 844, 45. So I just, just take that ratio, right? You could do it either, either side down here. You could come down on this side, you know, whatever works for you. Um, plug it in the formula, take the arc sign, boom, you're going to get the phase. Done. All right? That's straightforward. Okay. Um, and you'll know, by the way, um, you know, whether it's something like, you know, 45 or 100 and something, just by the direction of this. You know, is, it, is the ellipse this way? Is the ellipse this way? 
all right okay let's flip back to that original circuit because heh, circuit through function generators because uh, I want to show you something kind of cool on here as a matter of fact this this is getting a little busy so um, maybe we'll just clear these things so I have a little blank slate to work with so right I'm looking at same frequency but what I want to do now is look at what happens when there's different frequencies this is a technique we used to use back when we had analog function generators uh, you know, an analog function generator, un unlike a modern direct digital synthesis function generator, which you can just dial in the exact value that you want for the frequency, the analog function generators basically had a knob and you would rotate this thing and you never knew exactly what you had. You know, you would dial in a thousand, let's say, but, you know, it could be a thousand and two. Could be, you know, 998.7. Who knows? You'd have to get out a frequency counter to find out exactly what it was. But... You could do ratios really well on a scope with this. So if I have two function generators, I can put this in XY mode and we get a pattern out of this. So let's do our um, transient analysis again. What the heck? Okay, so let me go back to the transient and you can see that, yeah, you know, the maroon over here, I know it's a little busy, but the maroon is actually going at twice uh, the rate of the green all right all right so there's i've got i've got my vg1 vg2 is the maroon which is at twice the frequency so i've got twice as much going on there but the xy plot gives me this really weird like bow tie kind of thing all right um what's going on well it turns out that the number of lobes that we have on the horizontal and the vertical tells you what the frequency ratio is so over here, there's one lobe, right? I just have this one bump. And over here, there's two. So this tells me that these two things have a two to one frequency rate uh, ratio. So what you could do is tweak one of these until you got this exact sort of pattern. And this pattern can be distorted a little bit depending on what the phase is. So I'm gonna come in here and uh, change the phase on this to let's say, oh, I don't know, how about 45 degrees, eh? And we'll plot this one as well. So that moves uh, VG2 over, right, by a little bit. Bonk. And you can see what it's happened. So you imagine, here's what I want you to do. I want you to imagine this as a three-dimensional object. Like this line here is actually coming towards you. And this line here is going away from you. Like, you know, into the monitor. And this is sticking out of the monitor. Now imagine rotating that around this axis okay you see how that's working Vroomp. notice where the cross is sitting here okay that's giving you a clue in terms of what's going on I'll give you another clue so let's change this down to like 10 degrees Womp, right? See, it's, it's not as high, right? So when it's right there at zero, you know it's the exact phase. And as it goes out, right, this way or this way, you know that uh, the, you know, the phase is getting worse and worse. They're getting more and more out of phase, along with the frequency shift, right? So what do you think is going to happen if... Let's get rid of that frequency, sh that the phase shift. So what if I make this like 1.5? Okay, that is a frequency ratio, right? I got 1K and 1.5K. That's a two to three frequency ratio. So what was I saying a moment ago about lobes? Hey, cool. Two lobes over here, three lobes going across. And guess what? We can warp this if we play with the phase again. You know, at some point, you start forgetting what this is used for, <laughs> and you just start playing with it because it's just kind of fun to make pictures. Okay? Now, if you get a chance, if you have a couple of analog function generators, 
signal generators, you know, oscillators kicking around. Stick them into an XY scope, right? Put the scope in XY mode. This is a fun thing to do just in a real life physical lab. It's hard to do this in a simulator. Um, and just tweak the frequencies so they are really, really close, but not, like I said, not exactly the same. And what you would see is this whole thing, right? If I had 1K and just off of 1.5K, you would see this whole thing rotating, right? It would just be like flipping around. Like I said, you would imagine this to be like a three-dimensional sort of thing, right? And it would be going from like that position to this position to another position, okay? So let's see. This was, uh, what was the phase shift on here? I'll try to do it kind of like... Uh, zotropy kind of thing i guess so this will be like uh i don't know i'll just move this up to 40 and maybe maybe we can do this piecewise i haven't actually tried to see if this is going to work really well you know i know the math behind it that's just a question of whether or not i can get move my fingers fast enough to have it make sense You'll see what I'm talking about, hopefully. All right, so this thing just keeps changing. So let's see, where were we? We had, what, four of these, five of these? So we start here, we go to here, we go to here, we go to there. All right. So you can kind of see this thing and like it's, oops, hit the wrong one, sorry. All right, so you go there, you go there, you go there. You go there. So you can imagine this thing, like I said, like it, kind of like it's rotating. You could get it to rotate the other way, all depending on which one of these things you're monkeying with. All right. Okay. Now, like I said, if you actually went in the lab and, and played with this, um, you can get some kind of weird looking results out of here. So let's see. Oops. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, so let's say we did like 1.2K. What's that frequency ratio? It's 1K to 1.2K. That's a 5 to 6 ratio. All right, 5 to 6. Oh! <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's your lobes. All right, so this is a way you can, in lab, you know, determine frequency ratio. Not necessarily the frequency per se, but if you know one of them, then you can find the other one, All right? And again, if you were in lab and these weren't exactly the same, this thing would be rotating and, you know, it gets kind of mesmerizing after a while. All right, so bottom line, it's useful. Second bottom line, is there a bottom line number two? It can just be fun. You know, you could make like artwork like this, sort of like a circuit version of a spirograph, right? If you don't know what a spirograph is, just look it up on the internet. All right, that's a pretty good tour, I think, of our Lissajou patterns, what they're used for. Phase shift measurement obviously is the biggie, but there's other things we can do. Um, if you have any questions, you know, leave them down in the comments. And until next time, this is Professor Fiore saying, have a good one.